is, is getting, getting kids to enjoy exercise. And as a result, then you see kids who uh, want to exercise and therefore they don't get into childhood obesity. That is just the bare beginnings of what we're talking about. What is happening more and more that a lot of administrators and those, and those who make decisions about uh, whether physical education should be in school or not is that exercise actually turns on circuits in the brain that allows kids and adults to think better, to focus better, to make better decisions. Uh, as you can see on the handout sheet, which uh, is up on the uh, screen right now, there are a number of things. Uh, when I first started writing Fit Kids, Smarter Kids, my whole mission was to try to combat childhood obesity. Uh, I met with a number of friends who, works, uh, who work for the CDC in Atlanta and are in the area of childhood fitness and health. And each one of them told me that I needed to look into the connection and research between re uh, kids' fitness and their academic performance. And it's substantial. Uh, fortunately, they gave me access to their vast re research trove here. And I'm just going to give you the tip of the iceberg in the research here. Better test scores when physical activity is increased. Math scores are better when physical activity is increased. GPA and attendance improved when physical activity was increased. More strenuous physical activity results in the following. Better academic achievement, better math scores, improved reading and writing scores, and a reduction in disruptive behavior. On and on and on. And you can see this on the sheet. Uh, and there are more studies that are actually presented in the book, so you will have that ammunition to take back to your administrators when they start to mumble about cutting physical activity out of school. Uh, what is happening around the country to our benefit is a number of organizations like the Gold Foundation are stepping up to the plate when the administrations in uh, education have cut out physical activity in the schools. And as a result of this, I'm seeing a growing number of success stories. But the bottom line on this is that physical activity is not just good for your physical health. Uh, the experts that study the operation of the brain are discovering more and more reasons why physical activity actually turns on circuits that help you think better. It goes back millions and millions of years ago. It was physical activity that allowed our ancient ancestors to cover enough ground to pick up food and they had to virtually be on their feet for long, long periods of the day and night in order to survive. But in the process of covering these long stretches, the scientists are now discovering that during that same period, uh, our ancestors developed the mental capacities that we have as humans that were not present when they, uh, the ancestors were uh, still in the animal uh, uh, kingdom. And as a result, uh, the long distance exerted activities that occurred on those long treks uh, actually created circuits that allow us to think better today. I am the beneficiary of that. As presented in the introduction, I was not uh, a very active kid uh, up until the age of 13. My dad was in the Navy and I went to 13 schools my first seven years. Uh, I found it very easy to find excuses to get out of physical activity because I had never had practice in those areas and the teachers were lenient and they would let me out of, of this. And I became lazy, I was uh, really out of shape, and I really hated exerted activities. Reality, reality set in, uh, when I turned 13, my dad got out of active duty service in the Navy, and we moved to Atlanta, went to a new school. The new school required boys to go out for strenuous sports after school. Well, I floundered around, but got to meet some of the other lazy kids at school, and uh, tapped into their intelligence uh, as to which uh, sports to go out for. And they said, well, during the winter, you need to go out for winter cross country. And I said, well, that doesn't sound easy at all. And they said, well, it is because the cross country coach is the most lenient in the school. 
And all you have to do is tell him that you're going to run on the trails in the woods, and then you only have to run for 200 yards, and then you hide out in the woods. <laughs> and that's what I did for the first two days. But as fate would have it, on the third day, an older kid that I liked came up to me and said, Galloway, you're running with us today. Well, I had my strategy in place. I was going to reach the edge of the woods, grab my hamstring, and say, oh, I'm injured. I can't go on. But uh, they started telling jokes. And then they started telling gossip about the teachers. Well, I wanted to get as much of that as I could, so I hung on as long as I could. And it wasn't very far that first day. But each day, I came out there to interact with these kids who were interesting. I uh, had uh, a lot of good arguments to get into. And uh, progressively, I was able to stay up a little bit longer. But I discovered two things during the very first week that I was running with them. The first one was that even on the days when I was physically destroyed, I had something going on up here in my uh, mental and spirit part that I had never experienced before, and it was good. It was really, really good. And then, the second thing was, uh, in the friendships that I was developing, uh, it was a totally different type of friendship. Uh, the type of friendships that you discover in sports and in workouts, in which people relate to one another as individual human beings, respect one another, and help one another along. And these folks that I started out with 56 years ago are still close friends today. And this is the way things happen. But we're here today to celebrate uh, the programs of the Gold Foundation and Young Runners because uh, the studies go far beyond the 600 kids a year that are benefited by this. I've seen a number of studies in kids' programs showing that for every child that is enrolled in a program like this, there are 20 families that are affected in a positive health way. So you have a kid who enrolls in the Young Runners program, well, that kid plays with a number of other kids from different families, and they start learning about this, and they start becoming more active in the things that they do, and eating better, making better eating choices, and on and on. Uh, the other major impact that you see for an event like this is the whole concept of what goes on when people stay with the program. And those who are enrolled in a young runner's program are much more likely to not only stay with sports for their lifetime, but they're also more likely to recruit others into this process and then to uh, uh, infect their kids when they grow up, get married, and bring kids into this whole process. Uh, so you have a, a whole series of benefits that are coming about as a result of the simple program of helping kids discover the joy of exercise, which is there for all of us. But I'm not going to let you adults off the hook who are not doing regular exercise right now. Um, there is something totally magical about what goes on when one person, one, one kid or adult, invites another kid or adult into helping with their workout. So if you uh, have not exercised regularly, uh, there are a bunch of friends around you who are doing some regular exercise and just ask, could I go out with you on a workout? Uh, if you uh, are a regular exerciser, uh, look around for those who you think might benefit from going out with you on a gentle workout, on something that could be fun for both of you. Uh, and then. The other major opportunity here is if you're involved in an organization, uh, get them involved in 